Nobody can hurt him. Not a concrete, not a, a ledge, there ain't nothing that can hurt him worse than he's already experienced in life. And I think that gives him like a superhuman fucking power, man. Where's your wrist guard? First of all, Char is a phenomenal athlete. The kid would have been a stud wrestler, football player, basketball player. Whatever he wanted to do, Charlie probably could have. But he fucking loves skateboarding. And there was no other option for the kid. It wasn't, well, oh, I'd like to be a you know, veterinarian or two. I mean, he was fucking gonna be a pro skater, that was it. Yeah, skating was one thing I could always count on. It would never leave me, never talk back to me. You know, yeah, it did fuck me up sometimes, like you can tell by my face and shit, it does get at me, but it, it's, it's like therapy, kind of. Being on my board, that was my outlet, to fucking get rid of all the thoughts and memories that I had as a kid. Charlie was born in what, 1991? 1991. And uh, at that time, me and his dad used uh, meth. Crack cocaine or speed, you know, that always around as a little kid. I remember being a little kid and finding a dope pipe in a kitchen fucking drawer, you know? And I was like, fuck this. I went and threw the pipe, you know, and I broke it. Like, I was like a poor kid on the block and living in a, a box pretty much with a bathroom in a fucking kitchen. You know, I had to share one room with the whole family. I just didn't want to be home. I'd go skate to the skate park. That's where all my frustration went, is into my skating. Yeah! Do another trick! Do another trick! Charlie! Charlie, Charlie! Yeah. The day I met Charlie, like, I remember we were kicking back at the park and, and this kid, long hair, little Asian looking kid, just comes all ninja, blasting around the park, pops his board up and he's like, let me get a smoke, fool. I'm like, dude, what are you, this ain't freaking Ensenada, you ain't selling chiclet, fool, how old are you? He's like, don't worry about it, let me get a smoke. I'm like, man, get out of here, buster. Charlie was, you know, out of school and kind of being raised by the skate park. I wasn't really going to school, I would ditch school. And How old were you skate fucking? Probably like 12, 13. You stopped going to school at 12? Uh, How come? I didn't really fit in, really. Like, I was, didn't have any friends, I was quiet, and I was always getting fights with the random kids. Like 
I was fucking little kid running amok, smoking cigarettes, fucking drinking, and fucking causing trouble. Everybody be hanging out and shit, and like by the end of the day, it'd just be me and a couple other people hanging out at night at the park, and I had nowhere to go, so I'd fucking go sleep in the skate park. I'd use my board as a pillow, just pass out. And then I was 13, 14 years old. We got evicted, and my mom got locked up. And that's the reason why I like moved into Austin's house. He took me in. My godson's Austin Seahom, a pro skater from around here who Charlie took a liking to. In fact, he was staying at Seaholms for a couple months. <laughs> kind of like a pack of wolves ra raising a little kid. It's kind of what it was like. Four foot bong hits, keg stands, two hooter girls, two strippers, and a pro skater. I met Biggie one night and he just didn't see that as the best environment for me to be in as a kid. So the next day he came and got me and took me into his house and I met the whole family and everybody and you know they brought me in with fucking open arms. Charlie and I are from the same mold. I know what it's like to be raised on welfare, to not know when your mom's coming home. And uh, I wanted him to separate himself from that, to know that there's something different, to have some normalcy in his life. I wanted him to have responsibility. Life shits on you, you gotta pick it up. That's what he always told me. Life shits on you, you gotta pick it up every day. And that's dog shit for you, go pick it up. No fuck, go pick up the dog shit. <laughs> At times he would get so pissed off that he'd bite his lip and, you know, wanted to say, you're not my dad. And, you know, I'm not your dad, boy. You know, I'm not, but I'm someone who loves you. And I'm someone who stumped my fucking toe on the same thing you're about to stump your toe on. So why don't you listen, you know? They fucking always put, every day, like, put me in check, make sure I do my shit, you know? Like, I'm like, I don't want to go to school, dude. You know, and it's like, get your fucking shit together. We're going right now. Even if you ain't got nothing done, we're going to your school. Even like, I remember we fucking, it was like, I didn't even have to go to school one day. So it was just like closed. And we still went to the school to see if it was closed. And that's like fucking him making me handle my shit. You know, staying in school and graduating and shit. He graduated with my foot up his ass. But he did, he graduated, man. He was so fucking proud. He was so proud that day, man. The confidence is like a life goal, you know, like, made me feel good. And I wouldn't have graduated school without Biggie. If it is to be, it is up to me. Ten words, two letters. When shit hits the fan, Charlie knows that. If it's up to, if it's gonna be, it's up to me. Ain't nobody gonna do shit for you in life but you, you know? And I wanted to instill that into him. Biggie did a lot for me. You know, he taught me how to love, taught me how to forget, taught me how to forgive. I was in prison a year. I didn't have no visits, nobody wrote me. I didn't have no calls. It was, it was tough for them, I'm sure it was. All of them went somewhere else, you know. But I got home after that year, the kids picked me up and spent that Christmas with them. And I went into rehab and then I got my shit straight. It was timing was everything, you know, and I was there when Charlie needed me, when the parents needed me. And um, sometimes they say it takes a village, and it did, you know. And Charlie Blair wouldn't be the person he is without his mom and his pop. I mean, I, I was just someone to help point some things out to the kid along the way. All due respect to them. She's a strong, strong lady, man. And um, she loves Charlie so much. She fucking loves that boy. As we grow older, we, we grow more, more together as a unit, a family. Right. And um, that's important to me. Family is so important. We say I love you all the time, you know, we hug. And it's important to touch and say those things to each other. Really, it is.
just had my daughter. He's seen her, and then I think like a week and a half later, he passed away. So it's kind of hard too, going like having a little girl, and then my dad passing away. It was, it was fucking hard. It was devastating. It was devastating for mom. I mean, Dave didn't really spend a whole hell of a lot of time with them, like he should have. But they loved him very much, you know? I was going through hard times, and he just kept me in a dream and, like, just hug me. That's all he would do is just hug me. One thing he wanted me to do is stay on my fucking skateboard and be myself. And be the best I can. And you know, yeah, it does push me to be on my board every day. You know, the pain inside his heart pushes him. And there's always a channel, man. There's something we can do in life to, to make that pain go away. And to, for Charlie, it's skateboarding, man, you know? And um, I'm sure for a lot of kids it is. Like, we have little kids that are still sleeping at the skate park because they don't want to go home because they're fucking dads in a gang and they're fucking assholes, you know what I mean? This kid's at the skate park trying to fucking skate and be better for himself, and he's staying at the skate park because he doesn't want to deal with the shit at home. Just like me. It's a way for this kid to build his own fucking life. You know, not just a person, but to build his own fucking life. Is that my graphic? Right there, pal. That's my graphic? Right there, pal! That's my boy! Yeah. That's my boy! Yeah. Just to do something I love, and people love me because I skate, no end of happiness right there, you know? For the trips that we go on, like meeting all these kids, it's fucking rad, dude. And plus to go hang out with them after we go skate and shit. That's what I want out of my skateboarding. Everybody's about social media, and I want to be like in it. You know, I want to be the person that's social with people instead of being on social media with people. And that's how I was raised, just through the skate park. Like, that is my family, it's who I am. Like, just a big family, you know, we lean on each other. It's not just for myself. Like, this experience that I'm going through in life right now, it's not just for myself. It's for everybody else that looks up to me and that's around me, that believes in me. You know, like, if I'm trying a trick that I can't fucking do or I'm getting close to that's gnarly as fuck, you know, like, I'm obviously going to have some thought in my head that, you know, it's not just going to be done for me, it's going to be done for the people that had faith in me, that pushed me and, you know, want to see me succeed even if they're not there. And so that's what fucking, another reason why I just charge.